Welcome to another question and answer video. In this video, I'll be dealing with the question, how should we respond when we hear a new teaching? And I'm going to begin by making some preliminary remarks, and then I'm going to give you an example from Acts chapter 17, and I'm going to make a number of points about what I believe to be the right response when we're hearing something new. And so the Bible was given progressively over a period of about 1,500 years. God didn't just drop it down from heaven all at once. He used about 40 different men over a period of about 1,500 years to write 66 books of the Bible. And all the words of the scripture are given by inspiration of God. And he used the apostle Paul to fulfill the word of God, as Paul said in Colossians 1.25, which means Paul completed the word of God. When he wrote 2 Timothy, that was the last book of the Bible that was written chronologically. The Bible is not arranged in chronological order, but in a dispensational order designed for our edification. And so it's fitting, since Paul wrote 2 Timothy as the last book that was written, that he said in that book, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And also, now that it's all been revealed, we have the key to understanding the word of God in 2 Timothy 2.15 rightly dividing the word of truth. So we have the complete revelation of God to man. And so therefore God has revealed nothing new in nearly 2,000 years. Paul died uh, in the late 60s AD. But since the Bible is the word of God, nobody will learn it all even in a lifetime of study. So therefore there is much to learn that as we learn, it'll be new to us. I mean, the Bible is the Word of God. It's the living Word of God. You can't exhaust it. There's more there to learn. Uh, we don't have it all figured out. We need to keep learning and growing and searching the Scriptures. What a wonderful book we have. How thankful we should be. Um, how dull it would be if we learned a few things and that was it. No, we can continue to learn and grow all of our lifetime. And let me just briefly share a little bit by way of personal testimony that early on in my Christian walk, I was taught in the church that I was first in after I got saved, I was taught that concerning the church, it's a local visible church that started in the earthly ministry of Christ, and you're only part of it by water baptism. And I came to learn about the spiritual body of Christ, and of course, the local church is important also, but I came to learn about the spiritual body of Christ by simply reading Ephesians. As I began to read the Word of God and study the Word of God, I began to see things, and I remember when it comes to rightly dividing the Word of Truth, how I saw in Acts 3, where Peter said what he was saying to Israel was spoken since the world began. And then in Romans 16.25, Paul referred to what he was teaching as being secret since the world began. And when I compared those verses, the light came on. That's the main division in the Word of God. We must rightly divide prophecy concerning Israel from the mystery of the body of Christ. And so that was new to me, but it's been there the whole time. Those verses are right there. Um, and I continue to learn and grow. I, I've come a long way by the grace of God from where I first started out, and I want to keep learning, and I want to keep growing, and I want to study the Word of God. And we should always have a desire to keep learning the truth of God's Word, but we must not hastily receive a new teaching without careful examination. In other words, the new things I've learned from the Word of God have been based on Bible study, not just hearing someone say something and thinking, well, that sounds good. You see, you know, some are just intrigued by anything that is new, and, and they can be gullible to things that are new. In Acts 17, 21, uh, it says, All the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And that wasn't a compliment, okay? That was a rebuke. And so, yes, we need to keep learning, we need to keep growing, and there are going to be things that are new to us. But whenever we hear something being taught that we've never heard before, we shouldn't just hastily receive it, even if it sounds right on the surface. We need to prove it by the Word of God. We're living in uh, days of apostasy that Paul warned us about in 2 Timothy. And many are departing from the truth of God's Word. And people 
are being led astray and deception is very rampant. And so we need to be very careful that we, everything we believe we base on personal Bible study, studying the Bible God's way. So I want to read the first 12 verses in Acts 17, just to contrast the responses in Thessalonica with those in Berea as Paul was preaching the word. Uh, in Acts 17, now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Now during the Acts period, the transition period, Paul went to the Jew first. God was getting a remnant out of Israel before they were officially set aside in judicial blindness. And the transition ended in Acts 28. Uh, but Paul would go to the Jew first. That was a logical place to start when you go into a city where people are meeting around the word of God. And he would prove from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, risen from the dead. Now, Paul was given the revelation of the gospel, the grace of God. Paul was given new revelation. But if those Jews wouldn't receive what was plainly stated in their scriptures, if they wouldn't receive that, there was no need to go any further with them. So Paul always started with those basics uh, concerning Christ being the Son of God, risen from the dead. And to the Jews that would receive that light, he'd give the further light of the gospel that was revealed to him by Jesus Christ from heaven. Verse 4 said, Some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren of the rulers of the city, saying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things, and when they had taken the security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea, who coming thither into the synagogue of the Jews. Now notice the difference. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And search the scriptures daily, whether these things, those things were so. And what was the result? Therefore, many of them believed. Not just a few, many of them believed. Also of the honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. And I'm going to stop reading there. I'm just showing you, I'm not, it's not my point to expound all what we just read. I'm just showing you an illustration of a contrast in responses as Paul was preaching the word, there were things he was saying that was new to these Jews. It shouldn't have been, but it was because they were so blinded by tradition and uh, so forth. But there was a, a contrast here between what was going on in the synagogue in Thessalonica and then in Berea. So consider some points about the right response uh, when you hear something new. Um, First of all, submit to the Word of God as your final authority. It's not enough just to have the Bible. You need to believe it. These Jews in the synagogue, they had scripture that they didn't really believe. No, we need to really believe the Word of God and not just say it, but really mean it. Submit to the Word of God as our authority in all matters of faith and practice. Don't submit to traditions of men or your favorite teacher and what he has to say. Submit to the Word of God. The Word of God is the authority. Secondly, do not allow anybody to sway you one way or the other without your own personal Bible study. In other words, when you hear something, there'll be some people come along saying, oh, you should believe this, or others saying, no, don't believe that. Don't let people sway you. Don't get caught up in group think. Be a Berean. These Bereans personally they heard it with all readiness of mind. They searched the scriptures daily. They went to the word of God to see if what Paul was saying was so. And that's what we need to do. Number three, prove 
what we're hearing, prove the new teaching, it's new to us, prove it in light of sound Bible study principles. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Obviously, then, if it's not good, reject it. But if it's good doctrine, hold fast to it. So when you're hearing something for the first time, take it to the Word of God personally and search the Scriptures using you know, sound Bible study principles, principles that are based on the Word of God itself. And that takes time to do that, but you need to take the time to do that. Um, for an example, in my book, Study Notes on Dispensational Truth, in chapter number four, and this is not exhaustive, but I give nine Bible study principles that I believe are based on the Word of God itself. First of all, we're to take the Word, and I provide scripture, and I have some notes on each point. I'm not going to read all that. I'm just going to remind you of the nine things. Um, we're to take the words of the scripture in their normal and literal sense. Okay, when the Word of God uses figures of speech, it'll be obvious in the context, but typically most of what's written is to be taken in the normal, literal sense of what's written. Secondly, the scriptures are self-interpreting, and so it's not up to us to interpret the Word of God. God will interpret His Word for us as we study it His way, and the Word of God is written in such a way we need to search the scriptures, and one passage will shed more light on another, so we, we must not ever build a doctrine on an isolated text that's taken out of context. Thirdly, we must compare spiritual things with spiritual. Searching the scriptures, comparing scriptures, um, and then fourthly, we must understand the difference between interpretation and application. Many mistake an application for the interpretation. There's one primary there, listen, there's one right interpretation. Let me say it that way. There's one right interpretation to every passage of Scripture, but there may be more than one application. But always note that difference and don't mistake the application for the interpretation. Number five, the King James Bible has its own built-in dictionary, and we should always seek to understand the words of the King James Bible with the King James Bible. Number six, context, context, context. All right. Don't ever read something into a text, isolating it from its context. False teachers do that. Number seven, we must always keep in mind that the scriptures were given by progressive revelation. And so don't read something into a passage that wasn't revealed yet. You're, you know, we have the complete revelation. If you're not careful, you'll read something revealed to Paul back into a passage before his ministry that wasn't revealed yet, and it will hinder you. Number eight, we must consider what Paul says first, because he's writing directly to us in this age of grace. And he said, consider what I say, the Lord give the understanding in all things. And number nine, of course, we must rightly divide the word of truth. And that's the main key to Bible study, rightly dividing the word of truth. Don't wrongly divide it. Don't overly divide it. Don't underly divide it, if that's a word. Don't under divide it. Uh, rightly divide it. Okay? So... And there's other things. I mean, for an example, never try to understand what's unclear while ignoring what is clear. You get on a difficult passage or, or verse and uh, you're, you, you know, you're ignoring things that are clearly stated elsewhere and you begin to try to understand what's unclear and what you think you're seeing is going contrary to what's clearly stated elsewhere in the Word of God. Don't do that. And, and there's a number of things. I mean, there's just a number of things that are based on the Word of God, and it takes time to study the Bible uh, correctly. But you need to do that. So that's my fourth point. Take the time to examine it thoroughly. Proverbs 18.13 warns that if you try to answer a matter before you hear it, it's a folly and a shame. Take the time to search the Scriptures and see whether it's so. Now be a Berean. Prove it by the Word of God. That takes time. So do that. Take it to the Word of God and examine it thoroughly in the Word of God. If it's sound doctrine, it'll hold up. But you'll notice how when you take false doctrine and you go to the Scripture and you examine that false doctrine, it'll fall apart and it'll be so obvious. And so you reject it. But if it's sound doctrine, it'll be validated by the Word of God through careful Bible study. And I would say, fifthly and lastly, uh, there's a proverb which says in Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. Um, 
there's a price to pay. To really learn the truth, it'll cost you something. It'll cost you time and, and work. Be a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Take the time to study the word. And if you see the truth that's contrary to popular opinion and religious tradition, uh, people will oppose you for it. But be willing to pay the price to stand for the truth. Uh, get the truth no matter the cost and never sell it out at any price. You'll always take a loss if you sell out the truth because there's nothing more valuable than knowing the truth of the Word of God. So something is not dangerous just because it's new. It may just be new to you and it's been in the book the whole time. What makes it dangerous is when it won't hold up to scriptural scrutiny. There's a lot of heresy out there. There's a lot of false teaching out there. And you need to go to the Bible as your authority, studying it God's way. And if it's sound doctrine, hold to it. If it's false doctrine, reject it. You need to know what you believe and why you believe it. And don't ever just take anybody's word for it. Be a Berean and search the scriptures daily. There's more I could say, but I think that sums it up. And uh, so I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, why not give the video a thumbs up? And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. If you have a question, you can send us an email through our website, hopebiblechurchga.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.